Brad to your two warriors coming at you with a, another video. Today I wanted to kind of revisit growth hormone. We have a couple of videos to check out. But first I'd like everybody to go over to YouTube and subscribe to TRT Veteran. That's as it sounds, TRT and then Veteran. Um, and subscribe um, over there. Great channel, just started. Um, he's doing fantastic work so far. He's got two videos, and there's another veteran talking about you know his treatment and whatnot. And um, he's got 22 subscribers so far. So let's get him into the hundreds and into the millions. Did you know a traumatic brain injury or TBI can occur as a result of a severe blow to the head? It is often the result of a sports injury, car accident, persistent domestic abuse, or falling. Many relate such head injuries to the risk of brain damage. But did you know that other parts inside your skull can also be affected? Your pituitary gland, for example, lives right underneath the brain, and it can get damaged when someone experiences a TBI. This pea-sized gland is one of the master glands within your body, controlling essential hormone production to keep you functioning well. One of the hormones a pituitary gland produces is called the human growth hormone, which does more than just help children grow big and tall. In children and adults, it makes insulin work better, bones stronger, and muscles less prone to wear, tear, and fatigue. It also helps keep your mood brighter and improves your sleep quality. If the levels of this hormone are not right, it can be dangerous. Low levels of it, or growth hormone deficiency, is a condition that often happens to someone who experienced a TBI. Symptoms of GHD include a higher level of body fat, especially around the waist, anxiety and depression, decreased sexual function, fatigue, feelings of isolation, greater sensitivity to heat and cold, and lessening of muscle mass, strength, and stamina. If you believe you've experienced a head injury, whether you consider it traumatic or not, be sure your doctor knows about it so that they can monitor you for symptoms in the brain, hormones, and beyond. There are screenings, testing, and treatment options available for those who need it. You can learn all about the glands and hormones in our endocrine systems from the clinical endocrinology experts at ACE.com. So it's super important about that video is the kind of overall concept when we talk about traumatic brain injury and how TBI really is just code for inflammation in the body that attacked the brain and or you know physical injury that hit the brain and there's inflammation that destroys parts of the brain and then targets issues and hormones. But you know, essentially breaking all of that down, you really don't need to know, you know, how it happened. It does help you for research purposes, but it doesn't help you for treatment necessarily. And our overarching strategy is just to understand that we have a orchestra of energy production that you've got you know, your bass player, you've got a drummer. You got a guy playing the tambourines. So you've got different parts of this system, which is testosterone, growth hormone, thyroid, you know, various different parts. And even though we kind of use the overarching term on most of the clinics, or hey, it's a TRT clinic, or this is my TRT treatment for you know veterans or whatnot for, for TBI, we're not just doing TRT. Like that's not like our end all be all treatment. It's just fancy marketing to get people in the door, which is fine. But as a patient or as a doctor, we cannot be myopic in our view, and we have to basically look at, okay, you go, testosterone is easy, that's how you do it first. So you testosterone, then go into growth hormone, do your glucagon simulation test, your growth hormone serum tests, and not an IGF-1 in veterans, because IGF-1 is not a mimic 
or growth hormone. This doesn't work um, the right way because you have a, a non-functioning pituitary where the growth hormone comes from and then just not have any GH secretion. So it really doesn't help us do it. You might as well bypass it and just go directly into doing your growth hormone serum test and then doing a growth hormone stimulation test. And you know, once that's done, then you kind of fool around with it. Now, because obviously this is a controlled medication, it's actually controlled more than heroin, oddly enough, you and your doctor can do what's called an off-label prescription for pretty much every drug, including morphine and gabapentin and uh, name your dangerous drug, but you can't with growth hormone. So we have to go through our process. You have to, and in the doctor's you know defense, I would get an IGF-1 because you're the idiot people who don't know what they're doing, looking at the lab, so I might as well get it done. But then get your growth hormone serum test, and then you know immediately after that, even when you do it, even if you don't even have the lab results ready, just order a growth hormone simulation test, get it done, know exactly what you're looking at, and then utilize that as your baseline for treatment. And even if it's minorly low, or even if it's on the the cusp of being low, whether it is in my case, we're at zero percent. I say replace. The reason why we want to is we want to have a baseline of hormones that are not just okay, that are not just decent, that are not just you're within range. That if a doctor ever tells you you're within range, walk out of the door. They don't know what they're talking about. It's not how doctoring works. They know it. Everybody knows it. When a doctor has you in the ER or has you after a, a, a major surgery and he walks in the door, and you're kind of squirming or you look kind of shitty and he looks on your face he's like mm, i don't know this guy looks like he's in a lot of pain he's going to tell the nurse when he goes up there hey give, give this guy more medication then he's going to tell you but he, you know what's your pain level today or something like that and he'll ask you that like after surgery well they know right you know obviously you just had surgery or in this case you're a tbi patient and you feel like shit well okay just give me more medication right if you know what the safe dose of medication is and the primary goal is symptoms which is what the guidelines say that we treat well, hormones well then you treat the symptoms and then you focus on keeping the person happy and functional and having quality of life which is our primary goal of this this treatment because we're not doing the treatment as like a a bone repair or a brain surgery or other types of things because it's subjective and it's person to person we have to focus on quality of life and as our primary goal so if your primary a quality of life is you on uh the, like the maximum dose of growth hormones like 12 units or something crazy and that, that's what gets you into like Acromegaly territory, but you know that's that's a primary disease that someone has. So it's like an actual problem with the pituitary where it's like pushing out too much growth hormone. I actually don't know if you can get into acromegaly stages just based off of the medication itself. The whole diatribe is that even if you're upwards in the six and your endocrinologist, or regular doctors, and eh, no, we're pushing it kind of high. Well, as long as you monitor your labs and you're doing good and you're not hyperglycemic and not dying you may as well just go up and if it's 10 units every day that makes you feel good well it's 10 units like it's the same thing with testosterone there is no population studies of testosterone that says 200 milligrams is our our uh our every person dose and even more funny i was watching more plates more dates and there was a video by this guy fawad or something like that and you know one of these bodybuilder guys is oh you know like the normal testosterone range of a thousand um ngdf of total testosterone like okay you're a bodybuilder one you should know that total testosterone is is bullshit that, um if you're telling me about total testosterone and then you're saying a thousand because you're just going off of some reference range what tells me that you're not educated and you don't understand how it works and then i got in this like whole argument on the, on the comments about how you know this person was just like oh well, that's the normal natural range i'm like well who told you that because dr travison doesn't say that and that's what you're 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 regurgitating you're regurgitating dr travison's work from the range the lab questions 
Well, it's not how you're supposed to interpret it, and that's his direct quote. And his other direct quote, which I got from the guy, is, our work in nature is epidemiological and can't be applied to individuals. And it does not interfere in the practice of medicine and into cl a particular clinical setting. Don't quote Dr. Travis. Like, okay, what are you doing? It's not how this works, and it's also not how it works with on You know, we have to look at it as a symphony. We have to apply our skill sets and understand, you know, where everything is at and look at the whole total person. Um, so we'll watch one more video and then we'll get out of here. I do have to figure out how to do this. It's been a while since I've done this. More than 2.5 million people in the United States alone experience a traumatic brain injury, or TBI, each year. Some of these people are plagued by health issues for years after their head injury, including fatigue, depression, anxiety, memory issues, and sleep disturbances. Our work on brain injuries all started in the late 90s, when a Galveston philanthropist named Robert Moody came to see us. His son, Russell, had suffered a serious brain injury during a car accident, and he employed his resources to explore ways to improve the life of his son and others living with brain injuries. He was curious about whether his son's brain injury had caused dysfunction of the hormones made by the brain's pituitary gland and was willing to fund research on this connection. We were shocked and thrilled to learn that Moody had the right idea. My colleagues and I have spent the past 20 years working to help TBI patients with the support of the Moody Endowment, the Tear Foundation, and the National Institutes of Health. We've confirmed that TBI triggers a long-term reduction in growth hormone secretion that's linked with the chronic syndrome now defined as brain injury-associated fatigue and altered cognition, or BioFAC. Our TBI survivors who receive hormone replacement therapy experience dramatic relief from their symptoms and are better able to reclaim the lives they lived before their injury. The trouble is that BioFAC returns if the treatment, which is quite expensive and not always covered indefinitely by health insurance, stops. With this in mind, we're on the search to better understand the post-TBI syndrome and learn exactly how and why growth hormone replacement works so well in order to develop new treatments. We've recently published two studies in the Journal of Neurotrauma that shed some new light on this. More than 2.5 million people in the United States alone experience. So that was a pretty odd video. I need to check out um, University of Texas, MBU, whatever MB stands for, UTMB Health. I have not actually looked them up before. Um, I've kind of strayed away from different uh, different programs. A lot of them are all neurology based, and this is also something that's very important for patients to understand that you want to protect yourself and guard yourself with a plan. And the plan that I've kind of put out that is my primary concept is that you want to get your baseline blood work done, focus in on the hormones, focus in on the inflammation and the cytokines. You want to work that with a ideally a family practice doctor like Dr. Um, Bradford Garner at Mercy Hospital he takes insurance and he takes dry care, go to inverse. Um, bypass all the neurologists, bypass all the psych docs, go directly to him. Um, with a similar doctor like him, or with uh, Nurse Crack Justin Groach in uh, Tennessee. And if you've got to fly to Tennessee, like if it's a server state, go to Tennessee and get a, an appointment with him. Um, because the big hospital centers are all neurology focused. If a neurologist doesn't see something that they can fix, what's their next thing? Here's a psych drug. Here's this this uh, Parkinson's drug that we're using off label so we can treat your symptoms, supposedly, but they don't have any basis of any hormone or any counter 
inflammation training, or if they do any training, it's just not the first thing they think of, because they're really working with Alzheimer's patients, and for them, all they have is drug therapy, and it's hard drugs, so they don't have anything that's really going to help you, and, th and then after that, like, if you're at the VA, like, the first thing they're going to do is, oh, you're a veteran, oh, it means you're broken, oh, it means you need these psych drugs, it means you need, you need talk therapy. Well, then after you go through that for a bunch of years, your symptoms still remain, because if you look at every single one of the psych drugs, what's, their, uh, what's the, the, the side effects? Death, suicide, depression, feeling like shit, not healing your brain, right? So it's like, okay, why'd you go to them in the first place? Like, if you know these psych drugs are worse than the condition, why are you even talking to these people? So um, I say all this to say that, you know, you really want to focus in on the hormones, you want to focus in on the inflammation, and you want to focus in on the food piece. Now, the food piece gets complex. So for some people, just cutting all of the, the carbohydrates will assist them, but it's not necessarily just as straightforward as that. And you want to work with an expert who can do a clinical elimination diet. So this is not a bad diet. This is not... Oh, I'm going to go vegan, or I'm going to go keto, or carnivore, whatever it is. I'm going to work with a doctor to do a clinical elimination diet. You figure out what is bad in your diet that screws you up. And then you want to push the boundaries of, okay, well, we know that these things don't work, but then you want to also lower any of the high inflammatory oils, industrial sea oils, canola oil, any oils that you name, even olive oil, oddly enough, because olive oil is a thousand percent. Um, contaminated with different types of um, alcohols or different things that they like hexane and different chemicals that they use to separate out the oils and then it's also counterfeit so unless you get it from an individual farmer that you know in person and someone's literally seen them crushing the, the olives with their feet okay it's it's counterfeit so any olive oil you buy is not real um, if you look at any of the studies, it's all counterfeit. So you may as well just stick the butter and tallow and just stick to that and just completely disregard everything else and lower the inflammation. So you want to lower the amount of sugar and completely in the diet and get down to a hundred ish or lower carbohydrates. This is complex, even in myself. You know, with the cortisol thing and whatnot, and you know, I've I've, I've argued with doctors with the, with cortisol and how when you lower carbohydrates, it, it has a, a negative feedback loop. Personally, I think that's the case, but it's it's it could be different for each person. So, um, but the the primary thing in all the research is that lowering sugar and lowering carbohydrates is what equates to better health and better lowering of inflammation in the body so that's our, our primary goal to uh to get that done um i hope you guys have enjoyed this video like i said go on, the, on uh, youtube and uh subscribe to trt veteran i really want to support the work that he's doing he has just started he's got two videos now and um i hope that maybe we can collaborate and team up at some point and uh we can kind of talk about some of my ideas or whatnot um also check out trt for warriors on facebook got a lot of people in there there's a lot of doctors that are in there you need treatment you go there i even got it pinned at the top a whole list of doctors where you can go um some take a chance some don't um but you know we've got a whole host of great people and no questions a bad question you ask a question, you're going to get a response from some of the top doctors in the country who are going to give you an answer on what is what is the treatment path that is going to you know really be able to set you off and, and help you. Hope you guys have an awesome winter, and Merry Christmas to everybody.